let's talk about um, your world building process. Obviously, Shannara is uh, a very seminal, I would argue, one of the seminal worlds in fantasy fiction now. Um, in that, I think you came along when there wasn't um, a lot of fiction, fantasy fiction selling, and you've continued with that world to be very successful. Do you, when you approach a novel, do you do a lot of outlining and, and building of what's going to be there, or is your process more organic? You know, you, you sit down, you have maybe an idea, and you start. Well, this is, what, 35 years for me since, uh, since uh, Sword of Shannon was published, and I had 10 years in before that. So, say we're, you know, we're moving up on 50 years here of, of writing uh, in the fantasy field. Um, and when I started out, uh, you know, like most young writers, uh, some of whom are even sitting here today, you know, you just sort of thrash around because uh, you don't know what's going to work and what isn't going to work, and you try to come up with a story that you think is compelling, and you try to make it work, and then you hope to God someone will read it and love it enough that they want to do something with it. Then after that happens, and they say to you, when's the next book? Then you think, oh my God, I better think about this, you know. <laughs> So then you go back and you start to think, and then I think to some extent I started to develop an outlining technique because I had an editor that said, you should outline. And uh, so I thought, okay, I should outline. So uh, accordingly, I started doing, you know, nine and ten page outlines of what the storyline was going to be and handing them in before I wrote the story. And I developed, I thought it was good because it trained me to think through what I was going to do. Not necessarily to follow it doggedly, but at least to think it through and maybe organize better than I might have otherwise. So I did that for a long time. And then I used to, you know, I've lectured about this and how important it is and you don't have to do it and so forth. Well, so, you know, I put paid my dues. I don't have to do it anymore. Uh, so now I'm doing that more organic approach um, and I'm finding, uh, because it seems more intrinsically interesting to me at this age and this time in my life, and uh, so I'm not doing this, the set outlines anymore the way I used to. I'm doing it in a, in a more loose fashion, I guess would be the way to tell it. I'm still doing it, but I'm not doing it the same way. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I, I find I, I've not written nearly as many books as you, but there are some books that I actually do all the outlining um, pretty rigorously, and there's others, and it's more of a genre thing. When I write something really dark, I usually don't do any outlining. Um, the fantasy stuff that I'm doing now, actually, I've spent more time doing world building stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty plebeian right now, so we'll see if when I get uh, older I can go yeah. loosey goosey. Well, you know, Elizabeth George, who's one of my favorite writers, uh, says that three quarters of what I do in preparation for a book, and I know about the characters, never makes it into the book. Mm. But it's in my head and it informs the writing. And it gives the reader the impression that if they came to me and asked me, I would have the answer to that. And I think that's a, an astute statement, that you're trying to create a feeling of knowledge in the author, the storyteller, that makes the story feel real to you, rather than saying, you know, you have to explain every single thing that you've looked up. And you've read books like that where the writer just feels they've got to throw the cart in there and you think, oh, please, you know, 200 pages out of this wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, I have indeed, but we'll name no names. Um, <laughs> write, writing quirks. So I don't know a writer that doesn't have one, whether it's the guy who's got to clean the house before he's willing to sit down, uh, someone who can only sit in a certain chair, um, has to have a kind of meal or smoke a cigarette. Uh, I need to know what your writing quirk is. You mean the, like sitting with my back to the wall and my facing the door, that sort of thing? Is that, is that what you do? <laughs> Weapon close at hand. <laughs> Uh, no, actually, but I am, uh, I tell everybody I'm kind of uh, like Monk. Um, my stuff has to be where it needs to be, and I don't want it moved. And if it's moved, I have to move it back, and it has to face a certain direction and be in a certain place. And I have to have my stuff where on the right side and the left side and all that kind of stuff. And I only work at a set station. I do not work on the road. I don't work in hotels and motels. Uh, I don't work uh, riding in a car or on an airplane or anything like that, ever. Ever, unless it's just longhand scratching out of ideas or something. But the actual creative process has to take place in a designated space. Hmm. And now you've got That's a, pretty strange, I probably would guess. It's a little strange. Yeah. But now you've got a new a new place. Yeah, you know what's strange? You're all the writers I listen to, and I heard one the other night say they do everything longhand. And I think, really? oh my God, they'd write longhand? Well, I'd never get anything done if I had to do it that way. I just couldn't do it. Thank God I learned to type. So as long as it's the same place Keyboard. every day... Yeah. yeah, then you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I have my two stations that I work at, so. So, this is kind of a fun question. I think it's fun. 
Is there a book you've ever read, or maybe multiple books, that were just so good you thought to yourself, I wish I'd written that? Oh, you mean besides my work? Besides your work. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Oh, sure. Yeah. You're going to ask me to name them, aren't you? Just, just one. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Um, I, I think, you can choose someone uh, who's dead. Yeah, I can. I know I can do that. I, I actually read books quite often uh, that I'm impressed by what the author's done. Um, and sometimes I wish I'd written them because the subject matter is intrinsically interesting. Sometimes I just admire what the writer's done and, and not really wish I'd written that book. Do you know what I mean yeah, about yeah. the difference there? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you have to have something, you have to be invested. I, I felt like I wish I'd written uh, The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Mm. I thought that was a terrific piece of, uh, of writing and a terrific story. Um, you know, I just read The Passage by uh, Justin Cronin. I really liked that story. Yeah. Uh, it's a little long, but I thought it was very powerful. You know, and uh, there's been a lot, a lot anything, anything really by Kevin Brooks, uh, who's a young adult fiction writer not related, uh, out of uh, Yorkshire, England, who's, I think, a terrific writer. Um, and, you know, there's, there's others, too. But, sure. Uh, even some friends. Not many, but... A few. <laughs> um, so I have a related question. So and maybe in one of these books that you, you've named, or maybe another book, um, if, if you could pull on the cloak of fantasy and be a character in someone else's novel... Like, I know for me, um, if I could be somebody, I'd want to be Roland from the Dark Tower series. I just think that that's a very, very cool character mm -hmm. and cool world. Um, kind of an esoteric question, but I'm wondering, is there someone you'd be if you could be, an, be a character in a book? You know, the answer is no. And I get asked this all the time mm -hmm. in a peripheral way about movie characters. Oh, interesting. Who should play, you know, al -Anon, or who should play uh, Bryn Elmsford or whatever? And I always say... I don't know. I don't even care. Uh, I just, this isn't something that I, I ever think about. So, you know, I enjoy reading the stories, um, but I'm pretty happy with my life and who I am, where I are. So I, I, I just don't, I, I guess I don't ever think that way. Because I think if, yeah. if you, you know, my, my role playing days are kind of behind me. Yeah. So I, I don't think that way. <laughs> they are. I mean, that's just the way I am. It's interesting to me because that's the exact answer I got from Brandon Sanderson. Really? Yeah. So all you guys must be the same. What a wise young guy. <laughs> well, maybe we are. I don't know. I think there are, you know, I know some people who do disappear into their roles, and most of those are gamers who love to play the games online and one thing or another, and they kind of do disappear into their characters when they're creative. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it has to do with, you know, it has to do with how you write, too. I don't write characters that I, who's, I'm living their lives. I am, I am Oz, the great and powerful, hiding behind the curtain. And I'm moving them around the way I want to, and I'm thinking, what can I do next that will make the reader cringe? Yeah. No, what can I do now that will ramp up the tension or the conflict or whatever? Uh, that I'm more of chess player kind of guy than I am a immersion you kind of be person. Pull yeah. on the cloak. Uh, you've spent your career in fantasy. You you created <laughs> multiple. Yeah. Worlds. First, I was a lawyer. Well, that's true. <laughs> so all fantasy. Um, the question I have is this. I, I heard a, I read a quote one time by Stephen King where he said, um, he was asked this question, why, do you, why don't you write something serious? You keep writing these horror books. And he, his response was, you assume I have a choice. Which yeah, I, think, I remember that. So I think that means it's like these are the stories that occur to him that he's passionate about and, and he writes them. I'm wondering, is it the same for you? It, you know, you, you certainly at a stage you could write a mystery if you wanted or... Yeah, I, I don't. I think most writers, not all, because I know some that are different than this. But most writers write what intrigues them, and where they're comfortable, where they found a voice yeah. and they found a place where they're able to do what they want to to get said what they they want to say. And uh, to presume that a writer can simply say, "Well, I think I'll write a mystery today," uh, <laughs> makes it sound a lot easier than it is. Right. And uh, I think for, for most writers, if you can do one or two things, you're pretty darn lucky. And uh, very few writers that I know are able to move back and forth between different types of fiction. Uh, but there's a few, but not very many. 